Hello there and welcome to the restoration journey of my 547. Uh, I've done this probably a year ago, I can't remember. I've put a generic video in my channel as well for the whole restoration process, but now I thought maybe I'll explain uh, through the whole exercise uh, which I went through. So let's get started. This is a two part video. This is part one of two. As always, please do not work on it if you're not familiar with tube electronics. The voltages involved are quite high and they are potentially lethal. So this was the condition I got this oscilloscope in. Um, this was pulled out of a house which had a leaking roof and uh, which was being demolished. Uh, this was actually donated to me, to me by a very good friend of mine and this belonged to her dad and she wanted me to restore this. Um, so that's the reason I pulled it out. In fact, we didn't we did not even have proper permission to enter the building because it was about to collapse any time. Uh, somehow we sneaked in and pulled it out, and literally water was actually flowing through the oscilloscope. Um, we will see the details once I open it up. But this is how it was when I got it, and after restoration, this is how it turned out to be and this is the delayed trace with uh, uh, alternate sweep. I have put more technical details in my blog and as always uh, please refer TechWiki where you can find you know tons of information around the scope all the manuals um, and uh, you know contribution from members all over the world who work on these things uh, so that you know you can find a very good overview of this instrument even I upload uh, uh, sorry update uh, stuff there and not just 547 but generally any any vintage tech instrument you know this is the number one source and it's free it's 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 not a site where you have to pay anything so to start with I was wondering where do I start cleaning this guy up um, so I just gave a try on the handle just to see how the Tektronics uh, logo comes up and this is how the inside of the trolley was. And you can see the panel. Uh, there was a mud and mold growth all over. Um, many screws were arrested, but there was just mold all over the scope. And it was stinking. So the first thing I did was to take out all the knobs from the front panel to start with. Remove the plug-in, of course, uh, so that I can see how the front panel was. Uh, there was some sort of rusty substance on the panel which was kind of really stiff um, so I had to use label removers uh, isopropyl alcohol and all sort of components to remove it. Uh, it it did not come off in one go the challenge was to remove all this dirt in front of it without ruining the panel and this is how it turned out after several days of cleaning so this was not done in one go it took many 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 days to repeatedly wash it and clean it then i took out the uh, simple parts to clean uh, you know like the drawer for the trolley or the cart um, and cleaned it again i disassembled the entire uh, you know what do you call it the drawer into multiple pieces and then cleaned everything and put it back together and you can see it started shining already and then I removed the power distribution panel from the cart again cleaned it removed the fan grill this was completely black and then I cleaned the panels actually and this is how the panel was before I cleaned it uh, to be honest I had to soak this thing in uh, soap water warm soap water for a couple of hours before I could you know really start cleaning it because this was that dirty um, and then I thought, okay, let me start remove the fan because uh, the whole the whole unit is filled in some sort of you know mold or I don't know what what it is. Uh, so I removed the fan blade out to clean it. Now all these things happen in the night after I come back from work. Um, then I saw what is inside the scope, and you can see how dirty this is. This is the a photo taken from the opening after removing the fan and you can see um, the transformer sitting there and the inside panel and this is the view after removing the fan and this is after cleaning the fan blades. 
I had to remove the motor as well because I was not sure if the fan motor was going to be working or is it short circuited. So I took the motor out, I dried it completely because there was definitely moisture inside it. So I had to dry it properly and, um, you know, wash it and then lubricate it. And then I tested the motor actually with uh, AC power just to see if it's uh, working and it was working. And uh, this is a photo taken during the cleaning process. Uh, of course, this thing is sitting outside the house. I mean, this is not into um, anywhere inside the house because it's first of all so dirty. Second thing, the cleaning process takes multiple steps. Um, so this was kept outside, wrapped up uh, so that people don't see that there is something like this sitting outside. Um, and this was a photo taken in the night, uh, you know, after cleaning it. Now, what I decided to do was to take the CRT out. Um, the reason for removing the CRT is since I sensed that there is mold inside the unit, I wanted to clean every corner of this oscilloscope, excuse me, so that um, it doesn't, you know, keep any mold inside and, you know, stop stinking because believe me, this was smelling like mold all over the place. So I took the CRT out and uh, kept it outside and started cleaning it. I checked all the pins to make sure that there is no break and I just tested the CRT. Again, this was such an adventurous project. I was not sure when I'm going to fail. So I, I cleaned the CRT and connected the heater to my DC power supply just to see if the heat, CRT is alive or is it broken or, you know, is it gassy and the heater was blowing. So I was like, okay, it's good. At least I'm not looking at something which is totally dead. CRT turned out to be working because the, I mean, the heater turned out to be working because it's glowing. So I kept the CRT outside and this is how it looks. If you look at this picture, you can figure out why I removed the CRT. You can see the dirt inside the CRT cage. And uh, the next step was to remove the main transformer. Uh, the reason for removing the main transformer is uh, there is so much dirt inside, there is no way I could clean it without removing the transformer. So I tagged every line going to each pin. So it's the number what you see is actually the number which is going to the respective pin on the transformer. And the same pin is marked in the uh, schematic as well. So I, I tagged and removed every line of the transformer and then I pulled the transformer out. You can see all the connections to the main transformer sitting there and you can see the construction site around it as well. Um, and then the process was to, you know, take this thing completely out and clean it. So I had to disassemble even the front cover just to clean it properly and I dried it. So I kept it outside just to make sure that, uh, you know, if there is any moisture in the windings or anywhere in the unit that has to go away. So I cleaned that as well. And uh, the chassis, every time when I remove a part, I spray the interior with isopropyl alcohol, give it like gentle brushing to make sure that it doesn't uh, remove the markings at the same time it remove all the mud or the mold. Um, and I wrap it back and keep it aside so that it sits there and starts cleaning itself. And now it was time to take out the trolley. Um, so if you see the trolley base, you can see how dirty the trolley base is. Uh, I completely disassembled it into pieces and started washing every part one by one. Um, I can't really clean it with, with the complete thing. You know, so I just completely dismantled the trolley into pieces and put it back together after cleaning it. Uh, if you see the liner on the bottom, that's I've removed the liner which was inside there and then cleaned that portion, put the glue and got a anti-slip mat and then cut it into the shape and glued it in there so that it looks clean. Otherwise, it will expose the metal down below because I had to take out the other liner. It was too dirty to clean it was broken so at least one piece is back together now the trolley and the plugins uh, which came in with it I cleaned the plugins so this was the scope cart before I cleaned it and you saw how it is after cleaning it now the big one this is this is probably I don't know how long it took for me to do this um, 
the entire chassis was washed down with isopropyl alcohol completely again. I didn't want to use water because I was not sure if it's gonna mess something up, especially the high voltage transformer is known to absorb moisture. And I still don't know if the HV transformer is dead or not. So uh, I washed it with isopropyl alcohol using a gentle brush. Uh, every tube was inspected visually and cleaned. Sockets for every tube and transistor was cleaned. Um, and every piece of internal wiring and the panel was cleaned. Now, this is the stage where I could at least take the scope into my uh, bench because um, without that, I can't troubleshoot it. So this is the shape on which I was able to bring it back into the house, basically, because it stopped stinking. Um, the front panel, I think I've done about five rounds of cleaning. Um, Still more scars and you know rusted screws were there, but I've kind of spent a long time. You can see there is a mark on the top. Uh, that took like quite a substantial amount of time to remove it without um, causing any mark on the front panel. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Potentially it looks like some sort of glue which was there from a label. And this is how the unit is. So this is how it was. And now I'm gonna start installing the parts together. Of course, the easiest one is to put the fan and the fan grill back. And um, this is the cleaned chassis. You can see the area behind the transformer and how clean it is. Um, this is the vertical section and the plug-in interface. And this is a close-up of the time base B and delay time base. You can see the CRT cage is also cleaned, um, the front panel, I put all the knobs back, all the knobs were cleaned as well, of course, and put all the knobs back into the scope. And uh, you see the CRT cage looks dirty, but it's not. It's been cleaned properly. It's just the mark on the paint, which is not coming out. And uh, now it is ready for some electrical uh, restoration. Now this is into my lab for uh, the actual work. So I put it upside down because the first thing you need to attack on these things is the power supply. And of course, all the capacitor wiring for the power supply or the power supply section is usually underneath these chassis. This is kind of common for most of the 500 series oscilloscopes. Um, my bench is much clean back in the days compared to what it is today. Now, again, those days I just used to recap. I never used to reform. And I, I don't know if on this chassis I will try reforming because of the condition it, it, it was rescued from. I, I really don't know if it's going to work. But I've used uh, Nichicons everywhere and um, re replaced or recapped it completely. I didn't want to take a chance with uh, the old uh, capacitors. Uh, it's mainly around the power supply. I try to tie it down and you know lock them down so that they don't move around and uh, completely replaced all the capacitors. I mean, I didn't physically remove the existing capacitors. I just added the extra ones um, so that aesthetically it looks good. And of course, it's ugly if you ask me, uh, but you know that's all I could do now. Now the um, the next step was uh, rest of the mica paper and uh, you know suspicious capacitors, which looks like mica, but maybe paper. So kind of tested one from every type to make sure that it's not paper and it's not leaky, and uh, replaced wherever it was necessary to you know swap them out. And most of this works work happens in the night, so you can see me working on it. Uh, remember there is a capacitor inside the high voltage cage as well. There's an electrolytic inside there. Uh, in case if you are doing any sort of recapping or testing, uh, just make sure that you're replacing that as well. And now the scope is back on its foot. Now it's time to install the main transformer. I did not install the transformer because I want to keep the unit light. Since, away, since I was flipping it upside down and working on it, I didn't want to make it too heavy so I, I didn't install the transformer initially and now it's time to install the transformer back and uh, you can see the wrench going all the way into the scope to install the transformer. Um, 
tightened it down and um, now it's time to reconnect all the transformer windings. Um, so since I've tagged all the windings, I had to go back and put each winding back into its, its respective connector. So every winding was resoldered back into the respective connector. Not winding, every um, line was wired back to the respective winding. Next is the most critical step uh, to remove the time delay relay tube or the delay tube. Um, I take that off to keep the oscilloscope from powering on the plate voltages um, so that it stays just with heater power. So I pull that out. This scope is extremely special because uh, of the condition in which it was rescued from. So I was not sure if the transformer is going to blow up or if it's shorted inside or if there is water inside. So I was, I was not sure. I didn't want to cause any damage. In fact, I dried the transformer out in sun for a couple of days to take out obvious moisture. It was not a professional, you know, demoisturizing, but um, kind of dried it completely, but still I wanted to go by steps. So I applied kind of 60 volt slowly to the input just to see if the transformer is holding up or is it arcing or is there any secondary winding causing any trouble. And um, this is the photo taken at the very first power up actually. You can see the, the the two lamps, the graphical illumination lamps in the front is lit and all the tubes are uh, lit as well. Um, this is exactly what I wanted to do first without any power. And then I slowly went to the full-blown 120 input and uh, kept all the tubes um, warming up. Now the reason for doing that is to make sure that first all the tubes, I, I can make sure that all the heater windings are good, all the heater wiring is good, and all the tubes are getting heater power, and um, also give a warm up to the unit, make sure, make sure that uh, it, is, uh, it is kind of, you know, slowly coming back to life, and without high voltages on, high voltages on the plate. Uh, plus, if there is any moisture somewhere in the system, maybe due to this warm-up, it will start evaporating. This is a video taken during the first power-up, just with the heater power. I should admit the fact that I was really watching out to see if the transformer is going to give up or not, uh, but it did not. So. I, I, I was I was extremely extremely you know cautious about you know if it's going to hold on or not. Now it's time to install the CRT back into the scope. Um, you have to remove the front bezels, insert the CRT back, apply some talcum powder to make sure that it doesn't lock up, and put the connector back in. Uh, align the anode pin to make sure that the CRT is sitting properly and uh, put the locking screw. A quick note here, do not unscrew this thing completely because there's a, there's a nut inside it. If that comes out, it's gonna be really difficult to put this guy back. So just loosen the CRT locking screw, but don't unscrew it completely. And the CRT connector is uh, inserted back. And now it's time to connect all the deflection plates. So these are the vertical deflection plates and the horizontal deflection plates are uh, up a wall. And the fan bezel is put back, I put the CRT bezel back, and I keep powering it on all the time just to make sure that it heats up properly. And um, this is with the screen illumination and all the tubes powered up. Again, no plate voltage, this is just heater. 